covered the Postgres SSH module. It's a module that I wrote for automation of tasks through the SSH protocol. It is it's supported on Windows PowerShell version 5 and above. It is open source license under the triple BSD license. You can find the source code in GitHub, and it's actually based on the SSH.NET library. So any limitations that this library has, so will the module. It supports multiple key exchange methods and encryption, um, the most common ones in addition to hash algorithms. And the main types of keys that are supported by the module are RSA and DSA keys. DES and AES for the encryption of the keys themselves. Sadly, we do not support yet the latest encryption that you'll see in modern versions of OpenSSH. So let's get started with the installation process. And on a Windows 10 host, we're going to open PowerShell as administrator. And we're going to be installing the module directly from the PowerShell gallery. Uh, this is the main method that I recommend people to install the module using the install module commandlet since it is the easiest one and less prone to error. Uh, we're going to specify the name, which is posh SSH. We're going to do tech force because we're installing from an untrusted source. The PowerShell gallery is considered untrusted, untrusted source by the install module uh, commandlet itself. Uh, if this is the first time that you're actually running the commandlet, it will ask you to update the nugget package. So this is normal. You just type Y and just hit enter. So it will update the package for you. It will download everything and it will place it in the appropriate folders for you to use. Now, one of the things that you can do after doing the installation is to make sure that it was properly installed. You can do get module list available and then for name posh SSH, and you'll be able to see the commandlets there. Um, now, before we act are able to use it, we have to change the execution policy. So we do set execution policy, execution policy remote sign, and we do force so we don't get a confirmation prompt. And we can do verbose just to be sure. And we set it to remote sign. So this way we're able to load the module since it is not uh, signed with a certificate. Now we can do get command, dash module, posh SSH, and we're going to be able to see all of the commandlets are available for us to deal with SSH, SCP, SFTP that we have uh, at our disposal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a session. First, we're going to look at the help information for the new SSH session commandlet. As we can see, we have two different parameter sets that we can actually use to create a session. The main difference between both of them is that one of them takes a key file, the other one a key string. Key string is just the contents of the open SSH key itself or an SSH.com key. Now we can look at examples and includes a simple example of a connection to a server. So let's do a connection to one of my test lab servers, new SSH session, computer name 192.168.1113. And we're going to be connecting uh, using the, uh, a SEP key. So we auto set the key and not be prompted. And for credentials, we're going to connect as Carlos. Now we enter our credentials, our password for the user Carlos. Now a session has been created. Uh, we can have multiple sessions. We can just pull them using the get SSH se uh, session commandlet. Each one is going to be identified by a session ID. If we want to look at what actually makes up one of the sessions, we can just pipe it into get member. We can see that it has multiple uh, properties and methods. The main one being the session object. This is the object or, or the property that is actually used by all other commandlets. Uh, so let's take a deeper look at that specific property that contains that object. If we save the session uh, into a variable here, Yet this is a session and we look at that object itself or, or that property and we look at the connection info 
property in it. This is the most popular one. That's why I wanted to convert first because it contains the banner for the server we're connecting. It's telling us the key algorithm. It's telling us the user, the IP. It's telling us all kinds of information that a lot of people that do automation using the module actually find very useful. In addition to this, we can just look at the session object itself. Let's just look at get member with it. We can see multiple uh, properties and methods that we have available there, uh, like connect, create command, create shell, and all of this get used by the other functions inside of the module. Now let's do a connection using an SSH key. So I have an open SSH key that I downloaded from my uh, Ubuntu server, which is the one that I we've been connecting to. So credentials, Carlos, and then key file. I'm going to specify the key file. The key file is actually in my downloads folder under my profile. So C users, Carlos Perez. Sorry, in documents. And then I'm going to do, what's the download? I think downloads was the one. Uh, ID, RSA, here we go. And let's do deck verbose. And let me enter the passphrase for the key. And it failed. It's telling me that the open SSH key is not supported. That means that this key more than likely is using the new open SSH2 format. So just let's just take a look at that, the content of this key. If we look at it, yep. We can see it's begin open SSH private key. Just by looking at those headers, I know that it's the latest version. So let's convert it using PuttyGen. Let's load the key. So we can convert it to the uh, previous uh, format for open SSH that is compatible with the module. Let me grab it here. Let me enter my passphrase. Remember when you specify credentials in a key file, your password is the passphrase for the key itself. So what we're it's telling us that it's using the latest version of the OpenSSH key format. So let's do something. Let's um, let's copy this, which is the uh, format that uh, the SSH net Posh SSH actually uses. Um, or let's just export it. Let's just save it as it is. If I copy this, I will have to. I, I can use it as a key string if I want it to. But I rather have the file, so let's export the private key. Let's just call it exp uh, export it open SSH. And now let's connect using our new exported key. And let me enter the passphrase. And now we have a connection. And with verbose, you can actually see the fingerprint for the server itself. Now, I hope that you found the intro to Posh SSH useful. I'll continue covering mul the multiple parts of the module itself so as uh, to help new users of the module. As always, uh, if you like the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you there's anything I can do to improve, just leave a comment and please subscribe. Thanks.